Hello, my name is Miriam Louise Carnot. I'm currently a PhD candidate at the University of Leipzig in Germany. And today I want to present you our paper with the title on stance detection in image retrieval for argumentation. Our main finding is that none of the so far developed approaches is able to significantly beat a random baseline, and therefore the task remains unsolved. We identified nine key challenges for this problem. Let's start with a quick definition for image retrieval for argumentation. The user enters a controversial topic as a query, and then the system searches for argumentative images that also fit this query, and then it divides the images into pro and con. We have a little example on the left, should the penny stay in circulation? And on the pro side, there's a, a diagram that tells us how many US citizens support the penny. And on the con side, there is, for example, an image that is a little cartoon where people are waving goodbye to the penny. These images can be diagrams, they can be cartoons, memes, photography, so any kind of image type is possible. So far, there was a first shared task at the Touche Lab of the CLIA conference in 2022, and there they used a three-stage evaluation that we adopted. The first stage is topic relevance, which tells us how topic relevant the image is, if it fits to the topic at all. And for this stage, we already got satisfactory results last year. Then there is the argumentativeness stage, which tells us if an image can be used as an argument or to support or neglect an argument. And finally, there's the, the stance relevance um, stage that we are focusing on in our work because the results in the workshop so far were unsatisfactory. We are reusing the Touche 22 dataset. It is freely accessible. It includes 50 controversial topics as queries, almost 24,000 images. And for each of these images, there are the image pixel values. There's the web page screenshot. There's the web page text and the HTML source code of the web page where the image appeared on, and there's other information too. And for almost 7,000 of these images, we also get relevance ratings. And these are the images that we are using for our project. We propose a unified image retrieval system for arguments. It is split into processes. First, we have the indexing process. So we take all the collection of images that we get and we put each image through the argument model, which is determining, determining an argument score, score A, which is saved in the index. Then during the retrieval process, the user inputs a query, and then the topic model takes information from the index and all the images, and also takes the query to determine a score T, a topic score for each of those images. It tells us, how well the image fits to the query. And then we rank all the images according to the sum of score A and score T. Finally, the stance model only has the task to divide all the images from this ranked list into a pro and a con list. Let's dig in a little bit deeper there. Uh, the topic model is basically using textual matching uh, using the BM25 algorithm from Elasticsearch. So it takes the query and also some information from the index. So for this, it is using the text which is close to the image on the web page, so around the image, and also the image text. We used OCR to detect the text that is written on the images, and the image text gets a boost in our um, algorithm. So if the image text matches with the query, this image will get a very high topic score and will be ranked higher. The argument model is basically a neural network that takes in uh, different features that are grouped into three uh, groups. Uh, first, we have color properties, something like average color, dominant color, etc. Then the second group is image type and diagram likeness. We use some simple heuristic to determine the image type and also how likely it is that the image is a diagram because we believe that diagrams can be very argumentative. And the last group are text features. So 
these features are about the text that is written on the image, so the OCR text. And there we're interested in the length of this text, the sentiment, the area percentage, or the position. And then this neural network is calculating an argument score. Both the topic model and the argument model were inspired by approaches from the Touche lab. And as they already got uh, very good results, we didn't focus our efforts on developing these two models further. We focused on developing different stance models and comparing all the existing stance models. We developed at the beginning an oracle, which is the upper limit using the crown truth stance label. So it is always correct and tells us what is the maximum that can be achieved. Then we develop two baseline approaches. First, the both sides baseline. It's taking the, the first images from this ranked list that we made and is putting them on the pro and on the con side. So on both at the same time. Then we have the random baseline, which is randomly assigning each image uh, to the pro or to the con side with equal probability. Then there was uh, the cruel query stance model, which labels each image based on which result list it was originally found while crawling. So the authors of the data set uh, used Google image search and extended the query with pro or with anti to retrieve um, those, those images. So this information was given in the data set. So this model uses this information. Then we developed the clip query stance model, which uses a clip model to compute the image's similarity to the query extended with good for pro and with anti for con. And whichever side it is more similar to, uh, it will appear on that side, obviously. The bird title sentiment model uses a bird model to classify the sentiment of the web page's title without knowing the query. So it only checks, okay, is it probably a website that is more positive or more negative? Then the AFIN text sentiment model sums up the AFIN sentiment scores for each word of the web page's text. So for every word, uh, we, we look up its score in the AFIN dictionary. Both uh, sentiment models were proposed by the best performing group uh, in the workshop that I mentioned before. And for both of these models, if the score is higher than zero, it's pro. If it's lower than zero, it's con. And images that have a score of zero, they will not be further regarded. The second best performing uh, group at the Touche lab was group Aramis. They developed a formula model and a neural model. For the formula model, they use a heuristic formula that is based on 13 features that they based on assumptions. And the neural model uses those same features as input for a neural network, and it classifies images into pro, con, or neutral, and neutral images are being discarded. Then there's four other neural net networks that we developed. First, the neural text plus image three class. It combines a BERT model with a ResNet 50 version two extended by some dropout layers. And as input, it's using the image, the query, and the OCR text. And it has, again, three output neurons like the previous model. Then there is the text plus image two times two class. It uses the same architecture, but it's training it twice, once for the pro side and one for the con side independently. It has only one output neuron and gives us a score how well it fits to, to this side. Then there's the text three class. It is again, the same architecture, but with the title of the web page instead of the image as input. So it's uh, purely textual. And finally, there's the neural text plus page three class. It is again, the same architecture as the previous, but additionally uses the HTML text in the window around the image as input. And then we did the evaluation with all the proposed stance models. We calculated the precision at 10. Um, on the left side, you can see all the different stance models. Also, uh, the best of Touche 22, as, which was proposed by uh, Team Boromir. And on top, you have the three stages that were evaluated. And at the end, there is also the stance relevant stage divided into the pro side and the con side. First of all, for the topic relevance, uh, the Clip Curry stance model had the highest score with over 93%, but we can see that all of the models achieved quite high scores for that, 
which tells us that our unified approach um, is good for topic relevance. The same goes for argumentativeness. We get uh, a, the highest score of 83% for the both sides baseline, which is quite obvious as it's using the highest ranked images for both sides, but also the other models uh, get satisfactory results. But finally, for the stance relevance, we can see that there remains to be a big problem. We were, managed, we were able to improve the stance relevance score with our neural text plus image two times two class. We achieved a score of 48.5%, but uh, using some tests, we identified that even this is not significantly improving over the baselines that we established. We can also see at the end that for the pro side, um, the stance models work quite well. They have quite good accuracies, but also the baselines. Mm, but on the con side, there seems to be a big problem that even the best model is only able to achieve 30% accuracy. Mm. But we can also see that the Oracle only is at 80%, which means on that on average, there's only eight images out of, and we're looking for 10 um, for, for the query, for the con side of the query. So that's not enough to, uh, to be able to look for it. After these quite unsatisfactory results, we asked ourselves why stance detection is so hard. And we identified nine key challenges. The first one we call the semantic gap for diagrams. For humans, diagrams are a good way to, to, to show information in form of lines, in form of, of circles or, or bars. But for the computer, it's very hard to interpret these lines and gather information out of uh, these geometric shapes, like in this example. The second key challenge uh, was that different people have different valuations and they might see an image in a different way depending on uh, their political views or um, their nationality or things like this. And this causes dance ambiguity. In this example I put here, should abortion be legal? We can see in the retrieved image that most Democrats uh, support this. Uh, whereas most Republicans don't. And if you're someone that has uh, a view of the world as a Democrat or under supporting the, the Democratic Party, then this could be a pro-image and used as a pro-argument. And if this is not the case, then it might not be used as a pro-argument. Um, we also found that some images, in order to understand them, you need some background knowledge. And that's, of course, not the same for every person. So in this example, is human activity primarily responsible for global climate change? You would need the knowledge that burning fields and forests is very bad for the environment. Otherwise, you wouldn't think of this image as relevant for the topic. We also noticed that there's a lot of regional images in our data set. So a lot of images in the data set are focused on discussions in the US and also in Europe, but mostly in the US. So for example, even the query is a college education worth it. The, the question would not be as important in many countries. And this image shows arguments like that it is very expensive and that a lot of students are worried, but in some other countries, these arguments wouldn't even be valid arguments because education is very cheap, for example. So we can see that the data set is very skewed. A similar problem was that uh, the stance distribution is not balanced in the data set. Uh, for this example, with should bottled water be banned, we got a lot of images on the pro side, like with arguments like that it is expensive, that there's a lot of pollution because of this. But on the con side, we didn't really find any valid arguments or any fitting images. And I think this is another problem with the regional images because 
th these arguments are good for developed countries, but there are countries where drinking tap water is not safe. So there are valid arguments, but simply the data set didn't include all stances equally. Then we found that in some images, both stances are contained at the same time. So for example, in this image, we have a list of arguments for the, the pro side and for the con side. So you can very well use it in an argumentation, but um, it's very hard to assign a stance for this kind of images. So it would be nice to have an extra column that we can use for putting images that cannot be assigned a stance. The same goes for neutral images. So there are some images that contain a lot of information for the topic and that can be very well used as an argument, but they cannot be assigned a stance. For example, does lowering the federal corporate income tax create jobs? And you could post the, the picture and say, well, see, in France, they have very high income tax and there are still jobs. But you could also do the opposite and use the same image. So it is argumentative, but it is not possible to, to use a stance. It's clearly a neutral image. And this we had very often with diagrams or maps. Some discussions also have more than two possible stances. They are simply more complex than just dividing arguments into pro and con. For example, um, is a two-state solution an acceptable solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? And for that specific question, you could say yes or no. But in general, as we can see in this um, in this pie plot under, there is much more stances um, that exist. Like there is at least four more, and one category is other. So there might be even more opinions on how to solve this conflict. So sometimes it's just simply not possible to just say it's pro or it's con because there is much more to it. And finally, one challenge is irony and jokes as well, um, because they usually say one thing, but they mean exactly the opposite. And then it is obviously very difficult to say if this is supporting the query or if it isn't. For example, um, in this meme, um, the, the author is claiming that violence is introduced to humanity for the first time in the year when video games were the, for the first time introduced. And of course, this is a joke because violence existed before and they just want um, the, the reader and the viewer to just think about it for a second. But of course, this is very hard to interpret for a computer. Let's look at the lessons we've learned. First of all, we learned that a modular image retrieval system, as we proposed it, works very well for finding topic relevant and argumentative images. But unfortunately, none of the 14 reproduced or new approaches can significantly significantly beat a random baseline at stance detection. Therefore, it remains an unsolved problem. And we also found that this task provides many different challenges that need to be addressed first in order to solve the problem of stance detection. Thank you a lot for watching this and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. <laughs>